Hello everyone, this is WB and I've got a special report for you all today on the coronavirus and how it will likely impact the gaming landscape over the next few months. As you are almost certainly aware, unless you've been hiding under a rock, the coronavirus appears to be sweeping over nearly every corner of the globe and has virtually shut down the global economy. Reports indicate that the virus may bring about a recession or worse within the United States, and this seems to be backed up by the colossal downturn in the stock market, and unemployment reports seem to be making similar overtures. Hope does exist, though, with the United States and other countries pushing forth massive economic stimulus efforts to study the markets. The major developments in the gaming industry in response to this crisis have been pretty numerous. 2020 is still slated to be a console release year, and several major gaming events have either been postponed or even canceled entirely. Additionally, such a far-reaching event will likely have other major consequences as well for the gaming industry, so let's get started. Firstly, this is a console release year, and naturally those looking to make a purchase of either the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5 should be wary that the global economic shutdown has certainly had an effect on the World Center for Electronics Manufacturing. China. Factories and other workplaces have been put on hold across China for several weeks. This, of course, is slowing down the production and movement of resources necessary to produce the upcoming ninth generation of consoles. There is much concern that China, as the epicenter of the coronavirus, will not have its factories and supply chain resources operating on time to deliver the next generation of consoles to global consumers. However, it does appear that the Chinese factories are beginning to reopen. A telling part of the story here is that of the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo is currently facing supply issues for the Japanese market due to the effects of the coronavirus on its Chinese manufacturing operations. If coronavirus makes a return to China and shuts down China's manufacturing systems, it could mean delays for the upcoming console releases. The Washington Post reported on this issue in detail in an article by Mikhail Klementov. In it, the author notes that multiple companies involved in manufacturing consoles were spoken to regarding these issues. Quote, when asked about anticipated delays, answers ranged from cautious optimism to boilerplate wait and see, quote, we're monitoring language, to concerns regarding months-long delays and a possible recession. Spokespeople for both Sony and Microsoft declined to comment when asked by the Post if they anticipated delays or had taken any measures to account for or mitigate the temporary loss of manufacturing time and labor. So what likely happens here? It seems that one of three things could happen. If the consoles are delayed into 2021, I doubt that Microsoft or Sony will want its competitor to release its console first, so I think it may be possible to see a spring 2021 release date for one or even both consoles. Also, multiple third-party publishers will likely want their finished products out on the market sooner rather than later, but the extra development time may be beneficial for developers. If the consoles are not delayed, supply issues could become a major concern for the 2020 holiday season as consumers scramble to get their hands on the newest available consoles. Truth be told, I honestly cannot really recall the last time that I experienced a game or console release that was simply sold out in stores, but that could very well be the case here. Be advised, pre-ordering your console of choice may be a smart move when the option becomes available. Finally, if the coronavirus is not under control by the time the new console releases, for example, if it isn't safe for consumers to be shopping for the consoles, I think it may be possible that Sony and Microsoft will postpone a console launch again until spring 2021 at the earliest. However, current projections of the length of the coronavirus pandemic will need to be taken into consideration on this point. I would note that as of mid-April, it appears that the virus won't be keeping the world indoors forever. The University of Washington's model, which has been one of the key models employed by the White House during the pandemic, has projected that there will be no new coronavirus cases in the United States by early July. Beyond the new console launches, a number of major events and video game-related gatherings have been postponed or even canceled. E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, the annual show floor for the major console makers and development studios, has been canceled this year, and the Game Developers Conference has been postponed. So, what does all of this mean? The postponement of GDC is certainly a major bummer for game developers as it's a great opportunity for studios to learn from one another. But I want to evaluate E3 here. Well, for quite some time now, there's been a growing discussion regarding the relevance of E3 within the gaming community. Much of that discussion has been centered on the amount of leaks that seem to take place before the event. With the explosion of video game journalism and means of receiving news about upcoming games being so numerous, the question of why E3 is relevant to the contemporary gaming landscape is a completely valid one, and its flat-out cancellation this year is certainly not going to help the case being made against it. I really can't remember the last time that something was announced at E3 that required me to be glued to my TV screen. Much of the event appears to be a hype machine designed solely to excite consumers about games that they can readily find out about through other means. There's obviously a lot of very negative news surrounding a global pandemic, but there does appear to be a silver lining at play for the gaming industry. As per an article from The Hollywood Reporter, the use of video games has gone up by 75% during the peak gaming hours. Video game streamers are also seeing a similar increase in their viewership, with the same article reporting that Twitch viewership and YouTube gaming experiencing a 10% and 15% viewership boost respectively. No matter what happens, coronavirus isn't going to keep everyone in lockdown forever, and I'm certain that things will go back to normal in the near future. As a final personal note, I want to relate a recent experience I had with the coronavirus. So a few weeks back, I was in the middle of a move, and when I went to fly home, both of the airports I went into were almost totally empty. 
there were almost no people in the airport, and the airplane I flew on was almost half empty, and that was in spite of the fact that flights to my destination were being cancelled all over the place. A lot of people, myself included, are still on lockdown, so please try to be mindful that a lot of people are being laid off and furloughed, and that if you're able to get out and do your part to support your local businesses and video game developers, please try to do so when this is all over. Alrighty, so you've made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe for more content. I really appreciate your support. This is WB at the Gaming Station. Thanks for tuning in.